Hey friends, Andrew here, hope you all. I've been tinkering with my iPhone settings and home screen for years now, and I've come up with the first 12 things you must do to set up your iPhone. So these changes will help you use your iPhone more efficiently, protect its battery life, and basically just get the most out of your iPhone every day. And I've got a fresh phone with me here with a completely blank slate, so you can follow along and let's get stuck right into it. All right, so the very first thing you want to do is to check that you're on the latest software version and then turn on automatic updates. So to do this, go into the settings app and then scroll down to general and then click software update. So from here, just make sure that you are on the latest software. And if you're not, make sure that you update it, especially if you bought your iPhone secondhand from someone, for example. Then turn on automatic updates. Make sure both of these are toggled on here. And this is going to be really important to get your iPhone up to date with the latest bug and security fixes that Apple pushes out automatically without thinking about it. And it just helps secure your iPhone. So now that your iPhone is all up to date, let's start building out the home screen. So the very first thing we'll start with is setting up widgets and smart stacks. These are super useful in getting the most out of your iPhone every day. So let's bring in a couple of random uh, widgets and click the plus icon here. So I'm just gonna bring in some random widgets here. Let's add the battery widget here. So I've just added these two widgets here randomly, and you might be asking, well, what are the best widgets to add in and to use every day? And that's where smart stacks come in. So if I tap and hold this and stack it into here, now this is technically a smart stack. And then from here, you want to click on the widget, and you can see that there is a couple options here. Now, turn on Smart Rotate, and this will basically supercharge the widget. And basically what it does is it detects your app usage patterns over time, and using these patterns, it will show you the app you uh, use most at certain times of the day. So if you check the weather every morning, for example, well then the weather widget will automatically appear every morning right here. It's really awesome. And also one more thing is turning on widget suggestions. If you want your iPhone to shuffle to new widgets you might not use, but is worth trying. So you can test out new widgets throughout the day. So this is how I like to set up the home screen. I have the smart stack up the top and then two smaller widgets down here underneath for easy access to things that are important to me like Google Calendar or the Apple Apple Reminders app, for example. So for the rest of the home screen, I like using this space as well. So I recommend placing daily apps underneath the widgets. So for me, it's things like, you know, the Reminders app and also Google Maps and my mail apps. So to do this, pro tip by the way, you can move multiple apps at once by holding one down like this and then just tapping the ones that you want to add to the movement and it will all bring it in. So if I bring it over to the bottom here now, there we go. So in case you didn't know, that is a much easier way to bring things over to different screens. Let me know actually in the comments below if you didn't know this hack. Moving on to the dock, I usually place my most used three apps here and usually that is messages down here and also Safari into the middle. And why I use three apps is that I find it more visually appealing than having four in the dock. So moving on to the next thing to set up, which is a filing system for other apps. We don't wanna clutter the rest of our phone. So I personally like to hide most of my apps because most of them I don't use every day. So to do this, let's click on a app here and then click at home screen again click the minus button and then click remove from home screen instead of delete app. And that will just move it off and hide the app for us. Now, when I want to use the app, all I'll do is pull down on the home screen and quickly just type out the first few letters of the app. And then immediately I just click on it right then and there, which I find is faster than swiping through loads of screens or folders. So that's how I usually like to uh, find my apps personally. So I recommend using the second page of the home screen to be a folder filing system. And an easy filing system to use is a verb based folder system. So the default folder names you probably already know are things like productivity, utilities, and things like that, that I find are way too vague. So labeling the them with verbs like drive and learning, uh, listen, read, learn, it makes it so much easier to access frequent folders and apps. 
Before we move to the next thing to set up, here is a message from today's video sponsor, Clean My Mac X. So if you own an iPhone, chances are you own a Mac, like this one here. And Mac maintenance is just as important to keep our Mac devices running like it did on day one. So I've been using Clean My Mac X for years now, and I use it to routinely maintain all my Macs and prevent malware system issues or performance throttling. So I use the smart scan feature every week, which is the feature most people use from this app. If you click on this button here, the app basically searches for ways to quickly improve the Mac's performance. Then once the scan is complete, I'll click on the run button to auto perform the recommended tasks like deleting system junk, malware, or flushing unused DNS cache. Also, before starting my work on my Mac, the beautiful menu app is useful in visualizing all my connected devices, the battery status, Wi-Fi speeds, and even the memory and CPU capacity available, which is all super useful when I'm getting stuck into deep work that requires intensive apps. So yeah, definitely recommend Clean My Mac X as a must have app to help keep your Mac in tip top condition and also just help delete years worth of junk and to prevent it from being cluttered in the first place. You can try out the app for free in the link below and test it out and see if it works for you too. Moving on now, one of the most overlooked areas to set up on an iPhone is the control center here. It's a useful area to set up additional shortcuts so there's less reason to fumble around in the settings. Plus, I'd suggest maximizing all the extra spare space down here. So to set this up, go into settings and then from settings, scroll down to control center. So in here, go ahead and add in the controls that you think you'll use most often. And my favorite ones are dark mode, for example, uh, quick notes is really useful as well. With these, once you go back out, you'll see that it has filled up and you can also, by the way, manually adjust the positions by going and sliding them up or down. So once we have that set up, you can quickly add quick notes like that, for example, or you can even turn on dark mode and light mode on and off. So really useful area of the iPhone. Next is setting up the page to the left of the home screen, which is called the Today View. This page is great for quick access things to other common widgets you use and you want to glance at. So holding onto a widget here, same thing as the home page, click Edit Home Screen, click Customize here, and you can see all the widgets that you have access to that you can automatically throw into the uh, today view. So the few essential widgets that I like to have personally are the battery widgets, the time zone widgets, and also the app usage widget. One of the most useful features that came out of iOS 16 was focus modes. And I still use them every day. So going back into settings, scroll down to focus. And then from here, I recommend setting all these up to activate at certain times for maximum productivity. So for example, let's click the plus icon here. And then let's create a custom one. So let's just name this one work, you know, work mode or work number two since I already have one. And then set up the color and the icon and then click next. So what you can do here is silence all notifications except certain people or certain apps. So for example, if it's work, I might want to not uh, silence my Google Calendar, my Gmail, things like that. I can add those apps into here and allow the notifications. So focus filters here is worth adding as well. This is extremely useful adding app and system filters. So for example, when I'm working, I don't use my uh, phone that much. So I turn low power mode on and also turn off the always on display and then click add. And that way we've got um, a more battery efficient phone when it's currently on work mode. So yeah, go ahead and set up a bunch of these. It's such a useful feature if you use a single phone for everything you do. Speaking about battery life, there are some big setting changes that we should change and it will help squeeze a lot more out of your iPhone. And here's what they are. So let's go back into settings again and then scroll down to battery. Now in battery here, there's a few things we should change. So once you go into battery, click battery health and charging, and then click optimize battery charging. So that's the first thing. Make sure that this is on, especially if you have a new phone, and this will prevent unnecessary overcharging, which shortens the lifespan of your battery. Then if you use iCloud, go into backups, and then scroll down to device backups, iCloud backup, and make sure that the backup over mobile data is turned off. 
because when it's to toggled on, it will drain the battery much faster in the background. And unless you're on an unlimited mobile data plan, you'll want this off anyway. Now, the next few settings are important, not only for battery life, but for privacy too. We're going to switch off some optional location services. So going into settings, go scroll down to privacy and security, then click location services. And then from here, review all the apps here. And my recommendation is to have almost all of them set to while using, and then go scroll all the way down and click system services. Now, this is really important uh, because unless you specifically use certain functions, I'd highly recommend turning most of these off, including Apple uh, Pay Merchant ID, core network search suggestions, and significant locations. If you don't, and also if you don't have any accessories, then also HomeKit 2, turn that off. And then going back a page, do the same for the tracking page as well. So click tracking here and just do the exact same thing. Just review all the apps and see if you actually need them to track your significant locations. And one other thing while we're here is at the bottom of privacy and security, you can see Apple advertising here. If you don't want personalized ads, if you don't want Apple tracking, targeting information, then turn off personalized ads right there. Next is Shortcuts. So the Shortcuts app is something that I don't see enough people using. It's a really easy way to supercharge your iPhone with more functionality. So in here, you can create almost any chain of actions that happen automatically. So to give you an example, I've set up this fast charge mode and you can see here that it has a lot of automatic steps that I've set up. So when I need to charge my iPhone as fast as possible, this shortcut will automatically turn off Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, turn off the screen, activate aeroplane and low power mode all at once so it's able to charge that much faster. I've also set up this ultra low power mode here. Now this one comes in clutch. So when the battery hits 20% and I'm out and I can't charge it, it will auto switch to low power mode and then a custom ultra low power mode if it goes to 5% where I can only literally make phone calls and that's it. It'll take a while to set these all up manually in this video and explain them. So to make life easier, I've linked in the description box a bunch of shortcuts you can just automatically import to your phone through the links and set them up in, um, in the shortcuts app. The next setting I highly recommend to turn on is the haptic keyboard, and this will make the typing experience much more enjoyable and tactile. So going into settings and then go to sound and haptics here and then click keyboard feedback. So you can have the sound on and also the haptic feedback turned on. And now when we type, you have to give it a go, you can fill the keyboard. It does drain some battery having this feature on, but by not a significant amount. And if you enjoy it, I think it's worthwhile having it on. Next, we're going to save a lot of iPhone storage over a long time by setting up messages. So going into settings again and scroll down to messages here and scroll all the way down to keep messages, message history. I would recommend switching this to one year unless you really like to keep your messages for some reason. Having it set to one year and auto deleting older messages and photos will really help keep file sizes of messages down massively. Um, and make sure that the low quality image mode is also toggled on at the bottom here. Otherwise, you'll turn your messages into another photo album storage and that'd be a total waste of space. One of the last things to do is to set up your lock screen. So go onto the lock screen and long press down and then click customize or add a new lock screen. So of course, the first thing to do is to set up a wallpaper. I'll use the Dunes wallpaper bundle linked in the description box below if you guys like it and want to use it too. Then it's worth adding in quick glance widgets to the top and bottom of the time. And the things that I like to have here is of course uh, the weather. So let's drag that in. And I actually like having the sunset time and the sunrise time. You can also see that I added a custom function widget here. So like if I tap the custom widget function, which is the Safari icon, it will automatically bring up Safari right from the lock screen immediately. So to add custom functionality on your lock screen, download a third party app called Launcher. It is free and then click on lock screen widgets and then add new. And then you're going to add the functionality that you want to launch from the lock screen. So it could be like contact launcher, it could be music, it could be an app. Um, and then you can set up all sorts of things from here like 
FaceTime calls, you can launch Fitness immediately, you can launch uh, you know, Safari like I just showed you. So yeah, there's a lot of things that you can do with this app and it just adds more functionality to the lock screen. If you made it to the very end of this video, drop the code word comment apples and I'll give it a like for watching to the end. And if you found this video useful, drop a like and be sure to subscribe for more. If you're looking to do even more with your iPhone, check out this video here. It's all about the iOS settings that you need to change and that I was, wasn't able to get into in this video. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.